Um, I'm introducing myself. I am Jian Chen from Beijing Technology and Business University. And uh, I'm a undergraduate student. So uh, today I'm introducing our online debugging tool for Rust-based operating systems. Um, so firstly, I want to talk about uh, why, why, we, why we want to implement this kind of tool. Um, we want to try to learn some uh, Rust-based operating systems like Blog OS and Accord. Uh, Accord feels a little bit like Blog OS, but it has a very detailed Chinese document, so uh, people people want to learn operating system by it. And we made uh, we basically faced two problems. Uh, so first, uh, configuring the environment is, is a little bit complicated. You, you need to compile your own QMU and there's Rust two chain and their dependencies and and risk five two chains because awkward runs on risk five so so a little bit complicated and the second thing is uh if you want to debug it many, many people when when they first uh, uh when they first try to try to make their own operating system they want a way to to debug their operating system so but gdb feels not very convenient it's text user interface many people not very familiar with that so we want to solve those two problems so our shortcut goal is is a rust os online debugging tool that runs on qmu and in the long term uh, we want to make a, a kind of box and inside the box there is a fpga or risk 5 board and it has this kind of online debugging tool uh, so people just buy this box and and they can they can start debugging and starting writing their operating system very conveniently. So this is our online debugging system. Uh, we hope to make it similar to GitHub Classrooms, uh, uh, which means uh, it's browser based. You don't need to configure everything. You just open your browser and everything's just there. You can start you can start uh, doing your experiments and. The debugger is separated from debugging kernel. Uh, it, it means that the, the kernel is running on server, and in, in, your, your client is just is just a web browser. So, so this is more convenient. And there is a VS Code plugin that provides uh, debugging features. And we do this way because um, because uh, because we wanted this this plugin can also be used in local VS Code. So, so many people, more people will try to use that. And this is our a screenshot of our tool. So you can see on the right side it has three tabs: it has a register tab, a memory tab, and a breakpoints tab. And and this breakpoint is uh, it has a kind of it has a kind of cache cache facility. Uh, it's a little bit different. And on the left you can see uh, we can set. Uh, we can set breakpoints wherever where, where we want, and on the bottom, this is the GDB command that actually sends to to the cumulus GDB stop. So you can see registers, memories, local variables, and you can you can write your own GDB commands. You set your own GDB commands if you want, and you can track system calls. Uh, this is a the main the main work we are currently doing. So you can know your your current privilege mode, yeah, whether you're in kernel or you're in user programs, and 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 the important thing is when you're running in kernel, you can you can set a breakpoint in in user mode, and this is not and this is not doable when you're using text uh, text based GDB. If you if you try to, for example, if you try to I'm running on a kernel. And you hit a kernel breakpoint, and you want to set a user mode breakpoint. That user mode breakpoint uh, will not be hit. Uh, it will just uh, it will just not uh, it will just be disabled. So, so this this is a trouble when when we want to track in system calls. And another thing is it automatically load and replace uh, simple files uh, because we have in, inside uh, our example. There is a symbol file for kernel, and there is a symbol file for for the program, for this program, or that program. 
different program, different user program has different symbol files. And this is our uh, architecture. Uh, uh, what, what it does is, so we have our source code on server, and there's a compile, compile process. After compile process, we get two files. Uh, the first one is the execute, uh, which is the operating system an image, and we load it into Qmu automatically. And the second thing is the debug symbol files, and this is important, I will talk about it later. And this file will be added to GDB, and with that GDB connect to Qmu. And in this time, you finish the first step, which is support GDB debugging. Now we can debug, debug using text, text user base GDB. And the second step is uh, the VS Code thing because people wanted to use VS Code. Uh, it, it feels more better. And the second thing is uh, the conflict I talked about later, and we resolve this, this breakpoint conflict. So, in the first step, there's a, a GDB debugging step. Uh, so for time limitations, I'm not diving too much on that. So basically you just install its dependencies and, and you avoid some code optimi optimization. By avoid code optimization, you need to configure uh, basically two places. The first place is cargo.tomel and, and you might be familiar with that. And you, know, you need to set debug is true to make it preserve debug information, but that is not enough. And then there's another another attribution which is opti uh, optimization level, and this this is uh, this is very important. Uh, if you set it to one, uh, two, uh, the default value is three. Uh, if you set it to zero, uh, it has a minimum optimization level, and and there are more places where you can set breakpoints. Uh, so second step is uh, adding G VS Code. Uh, the main thing we do here is a is a process called debug adapter because in VS Code, uh, you don't directly connect to uh, to any debugger. In this time, it's GDB. Uh, VS Code will connect to a process called debug adapter, and debug adapter will will tell GDB what to do. So this is a debug adapter. And this is a UI. Uh, UI basically has three parts. Uh, there is a part called extension front end, and it, uh, it, will, it will coordinate with debug adapter and, and do some UI change. Uh, so, I'm, I'm, so this is the second problem, which is the most, uh, most important work we do is resolve the conflict. By resolving the conflict, we made a new data structure, which is, a, which is this uh, breakpoint groups. We separate breakpoint in different groups. Uh, for example, here's a group name. You can see kernel group name, which means uh, uh, breakpoints in kernel, and this init proc, uh, init proc breakpoint group, and um, which means uh, breakpoint groups in uh, in init proc. So, yeah, different user mode application has different groups, and kernel, uh, which is one, which one breakpoint group. And we're, uh, we also have two key uh, breakpoints. We, we call it border breakpoints. Um, when those breakpoints are set up, uh, so uh, when those breakpoints are hit, when those breakpoints are hit, uh, it means your privilege mode is changed. Uh, for example, um, you might change from kernel mode to user mode or user mode to kernel mode. And this is a time where you need to switch your uh, breakpoint groups, and by this time we solve the conflict. I, I talk about later because in this in this situation, GDB only sets kernel breakpoints in kernel mode, and only uh, only sets, uh, for example, any pro any prox breakpoints uh, when when it's running in breakpoint. Uh, when it's running on any proc. So so we have a oh yeah, we have an animation here. You add a border. And the breakpoint change, go to user program A and when it back, the breakpoint will change again and you go back to kernel and, and this way you can go to another user program back and forth. So in this way you can support multiple user programs. And we we do this kind of thing in awkward tutorial. So um, if you wanted to do this in other uh, operating systems, you, you, you basically do uh, 
do the same thing. You uh, you find border is at border breakpoints, and this kind of mechanics and still works. Uh, so when switch breakpoint groups, you also update privilege mode lab, uh, privilege mode information because uh, Opera runs on risk five, and risk five there's not a register that can tell you what current privilege you are now. So uh, you need to uh, do do this kind of workaround. And finally, I'm talking about the limitations and our future work. So uh, our tool is now based on GDB. So GDB uh, has some Rust support, but not very sufficient. So GDB has some limitations, and so R2 also has limitations. Uh, so GDB cannot inspect itself, uh, which, is, uh, which is a little bit inconvenient. And VEC, VECDQ, uh, VEC, you, you can actually see what's inside VECDQ, but uh, some pointer values are wrong. So, and yeah, so, so a lazy stack uh, because lazy stack in lazy static, uh, the value is actually returned, uh, returned for a function, and this is hard to track. Uh, so, and our, uh, in the future, we wanted to solve those problems. Uh, if we want to solve problems, we need to, uh, we may need to, we may need to configure GDB source code, and also um, maybe we'll add multi processor support. So, uh, this is the GitHub repository. And thank you. This is my presentation. And now uh, look into the chat. Yeah, that's that's some amazing stuff. I mean, I just can't imagine how much. Can you kind of give us an idea of effort hours? How much work has been put into this at this point? Because it looks like a lot. <laughs> uh, yes, we started. Uh, we started this project. Uh, this January, so it's basically half a year. And there is a, a hard thing with, uh, because VS Code doesn't actually have very uh, very detailed documentation. You 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 can all, you need, always need to do through VS Code source code to get things you want. And many a APIs just has no that documentation or just not not detailed enough. Uh, you need to you need to find other people doing this, and you need to copy their code, and you, you actually don't know what's going on there because there is no documentation. Um, well, I don't think I speak for just myself when I say this is something I'm really eager to try out. It looks like it's really cool. Um, another question, real quick. Oh, sorry, Will's got a question. My apologies. Oh yeah, I was just wondering what kinds of OS bugs uh, aren't easily debuggable with your debugger, I guess, as a part of establishing future work. Like, have you observed various sorts of bugs that just can't, that, that students run into in practice, but don't fit easily within this framework? Oh, so uh, so, so, so you mean it's support on other operating system? No, no, not about operating system support, but about like, like like a debugger, especially like a breakpoint debugger, right, is intended to help with a category of bugs where it's useful to like stop and observe the state of the operating system, right? But I'm curious uh, what like other categories of bugs that people write when they're creating operating systems you think aren't effectively addressed by uh, this like a breakpoint based debugger that you think like further tooling or future work could address, if that makes sense. Uh... Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm not I have not very much idea. Um, uh, maybe there there's a way to do that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah we we could talk about it later. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm sorry. We, uh, Is we there a way? Watch... Can can you use GDB's uh, memory breakpoint stuff with this? Can I set a breakpoint in kernel memory and it actually break when it's accessed? Oh uh, yeah, this is possible. You you already said the breakpoint, uh, the memory address. This is possible to do. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So we we try to do everything that GDB could do. So. That's great. Well, cool. Thank you very much. That was fascinating. Um, it seems like such a useful tool.